Hey, what's up, guys? My name's John. Welcome to Daily Theology. The Canadian hit parade keeps on rolling. This is the third pastor, Jacob Riom. Uh, it may be French. Parlez-vous français? I uh, took Spanish and I wasn't that great at it. And I teach Chinese kids, so I'm kind of a hot mess in the language linguistics. But uh, he's a great guy. I watched the most of the interview earlier today. And I saw this on the Bible Thumping Wingnut channel, but Rebel News seems to be the one that often has these stories in Canada. So here we are again. I would encourage you to go check this out. But uh, this is another church called Trinity Bible Chapel, not the other one, the Baptist church that they were trying to shut down in the other Arter video that I did. So there appears to be just an all out swarming of churches. And so I'm going to play this and then comment along the way. But uh, he's facing uh, ridiculous amounts of fines, even prison time in his church as well. And they also changed the locks. People need to understand this is an assault on the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is head of the church. And what the premier of Ontario, the government of Ontario has essentially done, they haven't said it explicitly, but they have proclaimed themselves and asserted themselves as a de facto head of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ in Ontario. And, and we are resisting that. Christ is his head. And when I stand before Christ on the day of judgment, I want to present to him a bride that I have done my best to preserve for him as one of his ministers. David Menzies for Rebel News here in St. Jacobs, Ontario. And I'm with Pastor Jacob Rayum. He is the pastor here at Trinity Bible Chapel. We're going to be doing an interview right here outside the chapel. And you want to know why, folks? Because the pastor can't even get in to his own. So just to cite, we have to comment on that guy's hat. That is an epic fedora. That's almost Dick Tracy worthy. Very good. Well done. They changed the locks on his church. This is a new strategy. Maybe not as obvious as the three fence strategy used on Grace Life Church of James Coates. But uh, this seems to be an effective strategy. Just hire a locksmith and lock them out of their own building. There you go. Own chapel. He's being locked out by the state as the war on religion continues all in the name of COVID. Just will you hear this story? So Pastor, uh, you are joining a, I guess, long list of churches, chapels, what have you, in our great dominion that are suddenly getting the attention of the state of law enforcement and well quite frankly being shut down uh i guess your story goes back to uh last friday when the attorney general's office was able to get an injunction to prevent you from having sunday service here what exactly happened late friday afternoon we were in court and uh about five o'clock five thirty on friday uh, the judge granted um, an injunction for the province of Ontario or the region of Waterloo to lock us out of our church. And uh, they gave us till 2 o'clock Saturday afternoon to pack things up. So this has been part of a, an ongoing conflict we've had with the province dating back to just after Christmas. And as I said in the introduction, it, it, you can't get into your own building. A locksmith came on Saturday and changed the locks. Yeah, that's absolutely right. A locksmith was hired by the region to come in and uh, change the locks and essentially lock us out of our facility. So, Jacob, what is going on here? Um, I know that the uh, limitations in attendance for a church, it's 10 persons. And yet, um, as we, met, we talked about off camera, we can drive less than three kilometers away. There's a Walmart. A lot more than 10 people going into Walmart, Costco any other big box store you can name how do you make sense of that well i don't make sense of it it makes absolutely no sense it's complete so he's right it makes absolutely zero sense because it's not about logic this is about fear intimidation and upsetting the created order it's about removing god from the public uh, public view and removing god from the public life and that's exactly what they're doing arthur uh Pulowski in the video i just did he makes a good point. He says this is medical tyranny. It's a new form of communism and fascism that molds the two to use coercion and the power of the state to enforce this godless agenda. And some people will say, well, no, no, it's all indoor gatherings. Well, wh whatever you make of that, it's not. Uh, Walmart, the marijuana places, you could go down the list of all the places that are able to stay open. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because the core issue is one of religious liberty. This is our 
highest, most dearly held belief about truth and epistemology and worldview. And so those other areas, those other places, it doesn't matter because it's not the same thing. And even if someone is sincere in those issues, it doesn't make those true either. But we're talking about the true and living God. This is not a matter of subjective emotive preference. This is not a matter of uh, edict by some guy in a white wig somewhere. This is about the King of Kings and Jesus Christ. And as believers, we are pretty committed to this. We are not going to be dissuaded or moved from this because it is about eternity and it is about doing what is right and just no matter the cost, uh, because that is the call of the Christian to glorify God, even through opposition and persecution in a peaceful and loving way. And this pastor does a really good job. I'm going to play some more of the interview. He's very well spoken and uh, he makes some very good points. Completely absurd. I mean, we met here just as the locks, just before the locksmith got here. The police were outside watching us. There's about 30 people, I think, 20 to 30 people that met in the parking lot to sing and pray before they were about to lock us out of our facility. We had multiple police, I'd say at least 20 people, 20 officials watching us. Um, there were a number of us that were ticketed uh, for being here, singing and praying. And then what they must have done is they must have recorded the license plates of some of the people that were here because they've hunted them down this week. And uh, there's been several families in our church that had multiple officers, police officers, show up at their home um, in the evening, in the dark, uh, to give them tickets and summonses. You've got to be kidding me. You're telling me that members of law enforcement took down information, ran the plate numbers, found the address, and in the dead of night, went to knock on the door. I mean, to me, Jacob, this sounds like just all out intimidation. Well, it absolutely, absolutely is intimidation. We have one member or one, one uh, member of our church uh, who lives on a farm, it's dark, and the policemen were peering into his windows in the dark at night, and uh, his little girl was absolutely terrified. You know, it, it so let that sink in. I wanted to play that part, and then we'll, I'll let you check out the rest of the interview. But uh, he talks about the amount of money they're facing in fines and prison time for him. They're peering in the windows of this house, scaring this little girl. I, if that's not the creepiest thing you could imagine in regard to singing in a parking lot, they were singing and praying in the parking lot before they were going to be locked out. And these sleuths tracked them down and peered through their window and terrified a little girl. This is the uh, this is where it leads. This is where the mask thing leads. This is where it all leads. People said, oh, no, no big deal. It's just a mask. It's never just a mask. It's never just one concession. This is a series of events to upset and reset the world. They want to reset the world without Christ. And we've seen this in other places throughout redemptive history. We've seen it through empires and different stages to the Tower of Babel and the days of Noah. And uh, it seems like I've never heard of uh, such a coerced effort for uh, Western nations and even uh, other nations to, to kind of work together to stamp out religious liberty and freedom of speech. But it appears to be uh, moving ahead quite swimmingly in Canada. And uh, so uh, what should we do as believers? Well, we take heart. We're not anxious. Do not be anxious about anything. Uh, Christ has conquered sin, death, hell, and the grave. Uh, the main issue for humanity is that we pray for these people that oppose us. We pray for them because we are peacemakers. We are peacemakers because we have peace first with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection. Then we extend that peace by explaining the gospel, that people do need to repent. You know, there is a time for pastors to stand up and call these governments to repentance. And uh, that needs to happen. It needs to happen now because they need to repent and be saved. That's not out of anger, but it is true. They must repent or they will face God's wrath. And uh, that day appears to be getting closer and closer, as I've said. But uh, we take courage. We take heart. The world's been through difficult times before. Certainly by no means does this uh, compare to things in the past, but it could escalate quickly. I mean, I remember the, the 10 days or whatever it was, 15 days to flatten the curve or what, whatever the original thing was. It's never going back unless uh, people stand up and say no more in love, in kindness. And we need peacemakers right now. We need an awakening. We need people to repent and believe the gospel. And we need Christian fathers to lead their families and disciple their children so that their children can produce godly children that follow the Lord. This is about the hearts of children and families and the gospel. So if you haven't yet, repent and believe the gospel. Put all of your trust in Jesus Christ. And don't forget to hammer that like button.
like the 95 Theses. And if you haven't yet, come on, subscribe to the channel and pray for, for James Riault and uh, the people in Canada, the good people of Canada. There are many believers there, as well as across the world in China and other places. So pray for them and keep them in your prayers. Thanks for watching and God bless.